Welcome to the Needy Home Center channel. My name is not Heather. Heather right now is resting, relaxing, recuperating, and healing her body, mind, and soul, as well as that of her children. And so myself, along with many other content creators, are helping her and her channel make sure that her channel stays relevant and stays you know, up to date and with the algorithm and all of that kind of fun stuff. And we are creating a series called Inspired by Needy. And that is a series of videos that have been inspired by Heather. <laughs> and the video that I'm gonna be making is Dutch Babies. And this is inspired by Heather because I, when I moved to this home here, things got kind of crazy and we let our sourdough kind of just go to the wayside and we just left it in the fridge for a really long time. And then Heather was doing a series on sourdough and that really inspired me to, to make some sourdough. I was gonna make some, some rye bread and I realized that the sourdough kind of sucked and <laughs> we'd forgotten about it for a very long time. But through a very long series, probably would have been a little easier to actually make a new sourdough. I actually ended up reviving the sourdough. And so this is inspired by Needy because she saved my sourdough starter. <laughs> it probably would have been gone if it had not been for the for that series. So this recipe is actually used with sourdough discard. So if you are like me and you forget about your sourdough and you're not one of those people that make sourdough every day, maybe you just put it in the fridge and then once a week you're kind of refreshing it, this is a great thing to do with that kind of leftover sourdough because you do not need the actual, um, like the, the yeast and the rising properties of it, you just need the flour and the liquid and so that's pretty much all you need for this recipe. So it's perfect for some kind of spent old yeast sourdough, I guess you could call it. So all we need with this recipe is going to be some sourdough starter, honey, uh, milk, salt, and eggs. The first thing that we've done, all, that I've done already, is heated up the oven. And it is at 425, well, it's rising to 425 degrees, and I have my cast iron skillet in there. And we're gonna do this recipe two different ways. One is gonna be just simple, plain Dutch baby. I'm gonna show you just the basic recipe, and then we're also gonna do another recipe that is gonna be if you are canning and you're just looking for ways that you can use up your canned foods. So. Let's get into this. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to whip up our eggs. You want to make sure that I've done this recipe a lot of different times. I used to make this recipe several years ago. I used to make it kind of regularly. It was my son and my, my husband's favorite thing. And so I would make it a lot. And I believed that I had saved the recipe on my fridge. And I just had this three by five card on my fridge with a recipe that my son wrote out on it. And this whole time, for years, I had believed that that recipe was for Dutch babies. <laughs> it's not, it's just for sourdough pancakes. And so when I went to make it, it was all weird and wonky and I couldn't figure out what I, what was going on. So I had to go and I had to look up a recipe and I've made this tons of different ways. I have actually made it with the sourdough pancakes and it was just like a fluffy cake. It tasted good, but it was not a Dutch baby whatsoever. I tried adding some milk to it and that one kind of made it just a very dense kind of cakey type thing. It just, it just seemed undercooked. And I've also made it with, you know, just all of the various different ways of doing it. And you can do it different ways. You can use six eggs like I'm going to use today, and it's going to be kind of custardy and just delicious and rich. Or you can also cut down by one or two eggs and that'll make it a little bit less custardy, a little bit less eggy. It doesn't make it rise as much, but it does have a little bit more air gaps. I hope that makes sense. I'm sure with this recipe, if you really wanted to, you could probably even use more eggs. I have not. Let me clean that up, I'll be right back. Well, I guess that chicken needs more calcium. All right, let's continue here. I got maybe, maybe a third of the egg ended up in the bowl, so I'm just gonna add an extra egg just to make up for it. Okay, so we got all six eggs in here. Okay, so we have the eggs all mixed. You want to mix them and blend them to the point they kind of lighten in color. You want to be really nice and fluffy. We're just going to add in the honey, and we have a quarter of a cup of honey. You can add more, you can add less. It kind of just depends. I, I should mention that this recipe is the pretty much the same almost no matter where you look at. There's some very slight variations, like uh, if you go on Cultures for Health, 
Her recipe calls for less honey. Some recipes call for sugar instead of honey. Some say that um, you know it offers a variety of sweeteners that you can use. A third of a cup of milk. You can use alternative milks. You can use you know you can use cream if you want to if you want to make it a little more creamy. There's a lot of options with this recipe. So then we need to do the starter. And with this one, it, all the recipes that I've come across say you want to use two cups. I've weighed it. This is 100%, uh, what do you call it, 100% hydration where I just use one part of starter, one part water, one part flour. So it's like, a, they call it 100% hydration. And so that's what I have here and it's going to be uh, 500 grams. So you can measure it or you can weigh it. It's two cups or 500 grams, whatever floats your boat. Okay, and it does not have to be exact. Just kind of close. And then we're going to put it in here. Set that aside because we don't need it anymore. And then mix it up. Okay. So we mix this for about two minutes in the food processor. This one trick is the game changer for this one. The, I was trying so many different ways of cooking this and so many different things and I came across a blog article and, and that one said the two things that you need to do when your Dutch baby doesn't rise, you need to look at your heat, you need to make sure you're cooking things hot enough, which I was, and the second thing is blending, blending it up properly either in a food processor or a blender. And that was, that was what did it. And so what we're going to do with this, and I, you want to blend it long enough, you're kind of working the gluten, that's the idea behind it. And then the next thing that we're going to do to further bring out the glutinous properties of the gluten is we're going to let it set for 10 minutes. And this whole time, remember, we do have our oven warmed up and we have our cast iron pan in there. You want to get it really nice and hot like every level, every layer of, I don't know if there are layers in the cast iron, but every part of the cast iron, you want to make sure it gets really, really hot. And so we're going to let this set for 10 minutes while that one is warming up. And while we're doing that, I just realized I completely forgot to tell you and introduce myself to you. My name is Anna. I am coming to you from the Fermented Homestead. And I forgot to introduce myself because I usually do it in the beginning and then I don't even think about it. So over on, over on the Fermented Homestead channel, I like to do most of my stuff in the kitchen, except for this time of year, I have quite a few gardening videos. I have a gargantuan garden out in my backyard, front yard, whatever you want to consider it. I call it my backyard, my husband calls it the front yard. But it's a huge, there's in-ground gardens and there's raised bed gardens. I have row covers, I have row cloth, I have all different sorts of things at greenhouse and all kinds of gardening videos. And I also do all kinds of, pretty much any type of food preservation you can think of. I have either tried it or I'm willing to try it. I do lots of dehydrating videos, canning, freezing, fermenting, cooking videos, and I'm even starting to dabble in a lot of long-term ferments, like a lot of uh, fermented soy and things like that, which I haven't actually made videos on, but they are in the works because <laughs> they take a really long time. So I hope that you guys think about popping over to my channel and giving it a look around, see if it's something that interests you. If it is, make sure you subscribe. I've been watching The Needy Homesteader and Heather and her channel since before Mina was born. I've been, she's one, the, she's one of the main people that inspired me and has taught me how to do a lot of the things that I know how to do. She's the one that gave me the confidence to start canning and she's just taught me how to do a lot of different things. And she's just so inspiring and she, I just love her, her attitude and her perkiness and her perseverance through everything that she is currently going through and everything that she has been through. She's just been a huge inspiration for me. So I would just consider it a huge, huge privilege to be able to make a video to put on her channel and um, just to kind of, I just think she's amazing. She's awesome. And I've been a member of her inner circle since the day that she posted it. As soon as she posted that she was doing the, uh, like the YouTube join button thing, I was like, I gotta join on that one. There's no way around that one. So I joined that one right away and she's just been awesome. A part of the inner circle is actually a Facebook group that, that you can be a part of and you can communicate with everybody else and they give all kinds of ideas and tips and you can post your own stuff and get advice on from other people and it's just a really cool thing to be a part of and I really enjoy it. So if you are considering it or toying with the idea, I highly suggest that you join it. It is well worth it. I love it and it's awesome and this way you can also support Heather and her kids and just help them. So I really, I really enjoy it and I encourage you to do it. So. 
We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna let this thing rest for a little bit and then I will bring you back when we're ready for the next step. So now what we're gonna do, since we have a couple minutes left on waiting, we have a cast iron pan in here. Let me get my oven mitt. Cast iron glove, cast iron glove, cast iron pan is in, in the oven. You can see it's super hot and we're gonna let that butter melt. It's a quarter of a cup of butter. Now that the time is up, we're letting the butter melt in the oven. All we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and mix this up for like another 30 seconds just to incorporate more air into the batter. Okay, so the next step, you wanna make sure your butter is nice and brown like this. Basically, you're using the brown butter as like a flavor. So you're gonna kinda swirl it around. You wanna make sure you get all up the edges and the sides and everything. You want the butter all over the place. There we go. Then we're gonna take our batter and we're gonna pour it on the pan. You wanna make sure you're getting that nice good sizzle going on. I don't know why I have this mitt on, but whatever. And into the oven. And you can see it's starting to cook on the sides here. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, you can kinda see that it is cooking up the sides there. If you can see it, cool. If not, I'm sorry. Now we're gonna close this and that we're not going to open this for at least 15 minutes. You, if you open it too soon, it will fall and it will not rise and will not do what it's supposed to do. Most recipes say 15 to 18 minutes. I find that that is not enough time and I usually cook it for longer. So I'm probably gonna check on this for the first time in 20 minutes and then I might cook it a little bit longer beyond that. But do not open the oven for the first 15 minutes. All right, so we bake this for 25 minutes. And that's what we have so far. It'll rise in different ways. It'll Every time you do it, it'll be different. Sometimes it'll come just like up the sides and it'll just come like straight up. And then, you know, sometimes the middle will rise. You know, it'll it'll be different every single time you cook it. So, and you can you can watch it. It's just sinking, it's deflating. And that's pretty darn normal. So with this, all you do is just Cut it like a pie. Okay, so you can see, it is delicious. It's like a custard. And this one, you can see, is nice and airy. It has a bunch of air inside of it, and it is just like, oh my gosh. One thing that I forgot in the actual recipe for this is salt. You wanna do a half of a teaspoon of salt. Hopefully that won't affect the flavor too much, but, It's just a nice, fluffy, light, airy custard. It's so good. And with this, a lot of people like to put some kind of a syrup or something on top of it. I just, I like it plain. It's just, I think it's delicious. It's actually tomorrow. I ended up getting called into work yesterday and had to work for a while. And then when I got home, I had to take on the monumental task of up potting all of my tomatoes and peppers. So that took most of the evening, and so here we are tomorrow. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move forward with what I was talking about yesterday. We've already made the same exact batter. We have the pan in the 425 degree oven with the butter melted, and we're gonna move on to this next step here. Basically, it's just flavoring. You can use anything that you want to use, and pretty much. Like whatever flavoring that you wanna use, you can make it savory. You could make it uh, sweet, and that's kind of the route that we're gonna go down today. I'm just gonna give you some ideas, some ways that you can use your uh, your canned foods at home. You can also do this with ferments. You know, probably wanna go on the sweeter side, but you can totally go with ferments. Like I have a bunch of, I have some honey cranberry ferments. I have some, some blueberry ferments, and there's just all kinds of like more fruity mash type of ferments. So anyways, moving forward, what you could do, you could use old, like just regular pie filling that you buy in the store. I have some cherry, some strawberry, and some blackberry. Yeah, I thought maybe it was marionberry, but blackberry, you can use these. You can use any kind of frozen fruit, any kind of, um, you could even use preserved fruits like uh, dehydrated. You might just want to re reconstitute them because this isn't really like a super wet food. So you might want to rehydrate it first, but up to you. Anyway, so we have some golden raspberry jam, some blackberry jam, a pineapple jam, and raspberry jam. There's apple butter, apple sauce, some canned blueberries, 
cherries, peaches, pineapples, and some fig jam. This one's in the fridge, it's not really jam, it's more of a sauce. <laughs> but uh, So I mean, the possibilities are as limitless as your imagination is. You can do almost anything that you want to. So there's also several different ways that you can do it. You could cook this whole thing like we did yesterday and just pour whatever you're gonna use on top, whether it be the jam or the fruit or whatever it is, just pour it on top and serve everybody. You could put it in little dishes on the side that you could, um, and everybody can just scoop whatever they want, like a, a buffet style. What we're gonna do is we're going to actually cook it into the batter. And so what we're gonna do, we have everything warming up in the oven. We're gonna pick our fruit, which I, I can't decide between blueberries and cherries. So we're gonna put it in the bottom of the actual cast iron. I have the butter in there and we're gonna cook it for as long as it takes for this stuff to, to rest. I think I've got about seven minutes left on this. So let's get to it. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I hope it's gonna be so good. And you can also, this is just canned blueberries because I didn't have the proper stuff to make the um, pie filling, but you can just use pie filling. Like that's what I have here. These are just pie fillings. Okay, and into the oven. All right, so we have our mixture here it is all mixed again. We've let it rest for about 10 minutes. And now we're ready to pour it on top of the blueberries in the cast iron pan. All right, so let's go ahead and pour this on top real quick. I mean, you don't want to pour it too fast, but... Oh, the blueberries are gonna float. <laughs> Crap, whatever, okay. I was hoping it'd be nice and pretty in the bottom and just have like a nice base layer of blueberries. So, like I said, first time I've done this. So we're learning together. All right, back into the oven really fast, but not, but safely fast. So we have it in the oven. I have the timer set for 20 minutes. I'm sure that that is not going to be enough but I will bring you back when it is finished so we can see what it looks like. And I'll let you know how long it took. All right. So I think it's done. Hard to say. Let me get you a better view here. I was able to, I poked it with a knife and it came back pretty clean. It was just kind of buttery. So hopefully it's done. It took a half an hour. So we'll find out even if it's not completely cooked through, it's still gonna be just fine. So. I'm gonna let this cool just a little bit. You can see it's still bubbling away. So we're just gonna cook, let this settle for a little bit and then we'll give it a try. It did not come out of the pan very well, but we're gonna go ahead and give this a taste test. It's cooked through. I think just the, the actual, like the liquid and stuff from the actual blueberries, I think kind of just affected the texture of it, but it's still, it's, it has a great texture. And this is the bottom. So you can see all of it just floated to the top. So. You may as well, I don't know if it's any benefit to actually cooking it with the blueberries, like in the actual cooking process, or just add it on afterward, because either way, it's gonna be on the top. Seriously, this is so good. Oh my gosh. I cannot describe to you how completely delicious this thing actually is. It is a whole different level from the one that we made before. The one before is really good, it is definitely a base though. This is a meal. Like this is a dessert. This is breakfast. This is, this is like, this is better than ice cream. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So like if you're being a little emotional and you just need something like make this, this is so much better than ice cream. I hope that you guys take the time to make this or a version of this. If you do, definitely let us know down below in the comment section. Love to hear from you. I would love to know your flavoring ideas and whatever you have tried with this. It is so delicious. I really hope that you guys give it a try, especially if you have chickens and you have sourdough starters, like it's the perfect thing. It, it, it uses up your excess and you're not wasting anything. So it's pretty much awesome. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to head over to my channel if you would like to and check out the videos that I have over there. And be sure to down below, send a bunch of love and comments and amazing hearts and emojis and things like that over to Heather and give her some encouragement while she's resting and recovering and healing. And um, I hope you guys enjoy your day. Thanks for watching, bye.